Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In our previous videos, we talked about the functions and construction of the rear axle and also the types of axle casing, but it's not over yet. In today's video, we'll be talking about the types of load acting on the rear axle and the types of rear axle. We would have seen many trucks carrying heavy loads. The weight of the load and the truck is transmitted through springs to the axle casing. The wheels are supported by this casing. Now, we'll look into the various forces acting on the rear axle. A component of the weight of the body is transmitted to the rear axle through the suspension springs. The reaction forces acting come from the road wheels. The weight of the body causes both shear force and bending moment on the axle shaft. The next one is a driving thrust. The engine produces a driving torque due to which a thrust is produced on the road wheels. This torque is transmitted to the axle and then to the wheels. Connecting member connects both the axle and chassis in the longitudinal direction. This member is called a thrust member or a radius rod. The last one is a side thrust. Due to any side load, the rear axle often experiences side thrust or side pull. An example is when a car or a vehicle corners. Now, let's briefly discuss the type of rear axle. They are of three types, the semi-floating axle, the three-quarter floating axle, and full floating axle. The first and the commonly used type is the semi-floating axle. In this type, the bearings which support the rear axle are placed inside the casing. The whole weight of the vehicle is transmitted to the suspension, axle casing, and axle to the wheel and then to the ground. The inner end of the axle shaft is splined to the differential and the outer end is flanged to the wheels using bolts. In this semi-floating axle, various forces act on the half shaft. Let me list them down. The side thrust acts when the vehicle is cornering. The weight of the vehicle causes shear force and bending moment. Also, the driving and braking torque cause twisting in them. The next type is the three-quarter floating axle. In this type, a single bearing is placed in the center of the wheel hub. The wheels are fixed to the end of the axle with the help of a key, bolt or nut. This provides a driving connection and maintains the wheel alignment. Here, the weight of the vehicle is partly supported by the axle and the axle casing. But the main advantage of this type over the semi-floating axle is the major part of the load is taken by the axle casing. The three-quarter floating axle sustains certain loads such as the twisting cost due to driving and braking thrusts and the bending load caused due to side thrust when the vehicle is cornering. The last type is the full floating axle. In this type, the bearing is placed in between the wheel hub and the axle casing. The axle is not supported by the bearing. Instead, the axle is connected to the wheel with the help of a key, bolt or nut. Here, the axle is relieved from all stress. Instead, the load acts on the axle casing. The axle transmits only the driving torque. So that's it for this video guys. See you in the next one. Till then. Bye.